It's seven years since we first heard the names of Marvin the Paranoid Android, Earthman Arthur Dent, and the two-headed Zaphod Beeblebrox. Since then, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy has lost nothing in popularity and gained a lot in diversification, what the marketing men call crossover. The guide has most recently crossed over into software, cuddly soft, like this Hitchhiker's Towel, and electronic soft, as in this computer game. Last weekend, there was a convention for hitchhiker fanatics in Birmingham, and Douglas Adams now appears alongside Gulliver's Travels 1984 and Catch-22 in an O-level paper on satire. Minette Marin talked to him about his latest and no doubt inevitable move into computers. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a remarkably useful, if somewhat over-enthusiastic book. For example, its entry on Douglas Adams, ape-descended author and Islington ratepayer, begins like this. Douglas Adams, it says, is tall, really tall. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, dwarf-scaringly tall he is. I mean, you may think it's a long way to the top of the wardrobe, but that's just peanuts to Douglas Adams, listen, and so on. What the guide doesn't explain is why on earth the red double-decker bus has become a standard unit of interstellar measurement. Despite being tall, Douglas Adams has had a rather short life so far, 33 years altogether, during which time, through no fault of his own, he has become an embarrassingly successful writer with at least two radio series, three stage plays, one TV series, two records, one interactive computer game, and six million books to his bank credit. It is not yet clear whether there is an a priori causal link between his height and his current profession, though it is known that he uses A4 paper like everybody else. Were you immediately interested in the possibilities of computers? No, I was, I was a real technophobe. Uh, well, well, more than that, in fact. I mean, I feel I sort of spent the last few years of my life making my living by making fun of computers. And then suddenly it turned around and bit me back. And this was only about two years ago. Uh, and then I discovered these, um, these interactive uh, fiction games. And that was quite a rev revelation for me, because up till then, the only, when people said computer game, I thought, um, oh, it's you know, shooting down rocket ships and chasing little aliens around mazes and all that kind of boring stuff, which, which A, I was bored by, and B, I didn't have the hand-to-eye coordination necessary to sort of get any decent score. So I, was, I, I didn't like them for that reason. And um, then well, I think I played um, uh, first uh, Original Adventure and then uh, 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 one of the Infocom games called Suspended. Um, and suddenly discovered that there was a sort of great world of sort of wit and invention and uh, logical problems and all this kind of thing going on, there, going on there. And I suddenly thought, I would love to be doing this. I, I think a lot of people have great difficulty in understanding what a computer game is, if not just a glorified video game. Can you explain? Well, um, it's text only. It's, it, it's much more like a book than anything else. Um, but you get text coming up on the screen which tells you where you are, what's happening, what's going on. Deathless prose, of course. Um, and um, then it leaves you stranded. It says, OK, well, what do you want to do about it? It's, it's rather like life in that respect. It doesn't actually offer you options. It just says, here you are, this is, going, what, this is what's going on. Do something. The game begins in the same place as uh, the book, the record, the TV series, and the, rec and the uh, stage show, actually. Uh, you're in a, a darkened bedroom, Arthur Dent's bedroom and you're lying on the bed and you're trying to recover from a hangover. So the first thing you might want to do is you might want to get up. So you get up. It's very difficult, but you manage it. You're still recovering from the hangover. It's a good start to the day. Pity it's going to be the worst of your life. The bedroom's a mess. 
you see that it's a bright morning. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, the meadows are blooming, and a large yellow bulldozer is advancing on your home. This might worry you. So you find yourself being drawn into the story as one, of the, as one of the characters. Things don't happen to characters in a book. It actually happens to you, and you have to respond and deal with it. So it's a mixture of sort of storytelling and problem solving and lateral thinking and sort of strange species of logic. You play a lot of author's tricks in the game. Can you give us some examples? Yes, yeah, so here's something that you couldn't do in a book. Um, you play the role of Arthur Dent in the story to begin with you don't necessarily know anything different is going to happen. Um, in the early part of the story, you have various situations to react to, um, have various people to react to. You encounter Ford Prefect and you react to him and various things happen. And it's, it's, it's up to you what you do. What you don't know at that point is that in a later part of the game, you're going to use the infinite improbability drive and suddenly get thrown back into that same scene, only this time you're Ford Prefect. Um, suddenly, things you did earlier uh, 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 acquire a great consequence because uh, the game will remember how you behaved towards Ford Prefect and will reflect that in the way that Arthur Dent now behaves to you at, when you're playing Ford Prefect. So, in, um, so in a, a sense, uh, you have to sort of develop a kind of sort of social responsibility, you know, do as you would be done by. Um, a development I'm looking forward to is when uh, one's able to use with computers um, compact disc technology, so that um, instead of having you type the instructions in and you get text back, you will be able to say your instructions, you will be able to take part in the story, and what you will get back is not on the screen, but, but huge stereo drama, um, which will be manipulated and, and controlled by the computer in response to what you do. And it'll be as if you're actually taking part in the drama yourself. Um, I, think, I think that's an immensely exciting um, uh, um, uh, possibility. Because, um, and I think much more interesting than the sort of graphic possibilities of, of computers because, again, it plays straight to your mind. Now, this is going to be your first day on a strange planet, so I want you all wrapped up snug and warm and no play with any naughty, bug-eyed monster. Right, well, look. This computer is being very irritating. I think we'd probably lose our lose our patience with it and try just a little gentle abuse. Um, just bloody well open the, the the exit hatch, will you, computer? No, who said that? Um, well, we'll just try again. Come on, open up the exit hatch. Not to whoever said that owns up. Oh God, um, I don't know what to do here. I'm waiting. I can wait all day if necessary. I think the judicious exercise of a little senseless violence. Computer, if you don't open up the exit hatch immediately, I shall go to your data banks with a very large axe and give you a reprogramming you'll never forget. Is that clear? Yeah, well, thanks, let's go. I can see this relationship is something we're all going to have to work at. Like other ape-descended life forms, for some reason, Douglas Adams has worked hard to amass a number of small green pieces of paper. For example, it is known that he now devotes much of his life to this enterprise, traveling up and down the country, searching out unsigned copies of his book and quickly signing them. Such is the rarity of an unsigned copy of the Hitchhiker's book that true fans go to unprecedented lengths to guard their precious editions, camping out on remote Hebridean islands, shifting from town to town at the approach of his biro. Now that he has amassed a wad of these small green pieces of paper, his behavior has become somewhat untoward. Despite this, the Hitchhiker's Guide describes him as harmly mostless. The current editor, showing all the acumen with which he bluffed his way into the job in the first place, disclaims all responsibility for any entry compiled before lunch, after lunch, or at any time on a Friday. A highly profitable hoopy fruit.